how we'll do it. The coming glory. May the Lord have the blessings of the reading, to the hearing, and the doings of this world.
that God is here to meet your every need. You're not isolated. You're not alienated. God loves you. We want to tell you, God. Lord, we love you. Lord. We love you, Lord. Say, so we love you, Lord. predicted that this pandemic would be worse in the fall. And he was exactly right. For the numbers are higher now than, and than ever. We want to thank you for wearing your mask. Thank you for practicing social distancing and touch as less as possible. Praise God that we can get this pandemic under control. Amen. Just like to welcome you to uh, Mount Zion Assembly and Earl of your Academy of Excellence right here in the beautiful city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you're here for the first time, if you're in your car, just, just blow your horn. Any visitors? Visitors? Amen. Praise God. We thank you for, for coming out and fitting our service this morning. Uh, we don't uh, do this too often, but I would just like to, for everyone to please stand and let's give our pastor a hand. She's doing an outstanding job. Yes, blow your horns for the bishop. Amen. We pray that the Lord continue to, to guide her and order her steps and navigate us through this pandemic. Praise God. We truly trusted in him that he can do any and everything. There is nothing too hard. What you say? There is nothing too hard for God. Amen. Uh, for those of you that had, we have a birthday during the month of September. Uh, Brother Minister McGee, birthday today. Uh, happy birthday, Mr. McGee. Our uh, great founder, one that I, that I love, Bishop Dr. Earl Parche. Uh, we turned 93 today. And if he was here, he would tell me, I didn't tell you to say that. Who told you to say that? He was a great, great man. Uh, Granny Neal, where's Granny Neal? Mother Neal. 93. 93, Mother Neal. Praise God. Mother Scott, where's Mother Scott? Mother Scott can count. Mother Scott, 93. Yes, yeah, some pictures on the board. I mean, we thank God for our legends. These are legends. These are pioneers. Amen. These are generals. Praise God. Amen. At this time, we're going to have uh, one that I love, and I call him my friend. I don't call a lot of people my friend, but this man is truly my friend. He's going to come with a testimony at this time. Brother L.C. Jackson, I call him Jay. Come on, Jay. Give us words at this time. God have brought me 
through many dangers and troubles. I don't have to worry about anything. God has been good to me and still is. Everywhere I go, I get down, my back tear me down, and people, when you love, people will do anything for you. I heard a lawnmower running in my backyard not too long ago. And I went back there in the police office and cut my grave. You see what I'm talking about? When you in God, God will make a way. He wants us to love one another. Be godly to who you are or what you are. Some of us different than others, but God loves us all. And I'm here to tell you, I thank God for my pastor, for my friend, and our husband. We are friends. When we need one another, we're there. After like Mother Neal yesterday, I looked at her and I seen the love, crying and tears everywhere. That's what we need to do. Come together with one another. Not pretend anything, but love. And love one another. That's what God wants us to do. We wouldn't have to go through half of the stuff we are going through if we love one another. Let God have his way. You can't move him. He knows you from the beginning. And what we have to do is live and let God save my life. I would have been not even out of jail by now if it hadn't been for God. 30 years sitting in the state penitentiary. In 27 days, he brought me out. All right, all right. And they give me five years. They give me five years of probation. And I did five days, but they took that off. God is good. I wouldn't have to be here. Give me a good family. He brought me through so much. And he proved to me who he was. I didn't see, I didn't listen to everybody. People talking about this and that and this. I was for real. And when you for real, God is. I'm going my way to the old Clark. That's where I went and met Bishop Parche. I called him and said, how much you charge baptize me? He said, we don't charge. When you want to be baptized? I said, tomorrow. And I went by there, and he baptized my wife. She was a Lutheran. He baptized her, then he baptized me. And they told me we had to go downstairs and tarry for the Holy Ghost. I didn't know what they were talking about. I went out, and they said, get on your knees. I got on my knees. And they said, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I didn't feel nothing. One of them told me, he said, stay down there. I said, it was. I got up, I went home. I said, I'm not going for that no more. That same feeling come on me again, I went back to church. And I was sitting down, they were singing a song, joy, joy, joy. And my son was sitting inside me, he was debating. And something started in my feet. I want y'all to hear me. Started in my feet. And started coming up my leg. I ain't never in my life felt like that before. And then it hit me in the arm and started going down. I went to pick up my son, that same boy said, leave him. I got you now. And they said I was speaking in tongue, but what I said, somebody help me, Lord. I know what to say. And after that, my pastor come up, Bishop Pache said, God with you, son. I knew that. I stopped, I went to the home, I broke my Canadian club, I told my Feel everything out. I, I quit cussing. I ain't cussed no more, ain't drank no more, ain't done nothing. A few months later, I want y'all to hear me. A few months later, when you real with God, a few months later, I guess God said, I'm going to let him know who I am. We had a derailment on the railroad. The man sent me out and, and took two guys with me to work. Out by that big clock, like you go in Chicago. I looked at the rail him a bit and I told the man to take the wrench and take the anger part off. I got up in the dump truck to hook up the truck. A Northwest train come up on that track. It hit that truck I was in. They say I fell down between the truck and the train that cow catcher carried me a block down the track. Hit the other boy, cut his head clean off and hold it on. They took both of us to Deacon Hospital on 17 in Wisconsin Avenue, saying we both were dead. They said the lady came down, looked at the boy, said, that ain't my son. They said, where's your son at? He said, he in prison for life. But yeah, get his man to lie down today. And they found something on me, but they couldn't do nothing. Later on, I went home with my back broke and everything. I had to go to Manhattan. That's where I woke up at. God has been good to me. He's been good to me. But you have to be real for God, because he already is. He knows it. Thank God, y'all. Amen. 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 Amen.
service. Somebody would be at the gate to give on your way out. We're not going to ask you to get up in the rain. But as we go, we're going to ask someone with a basket to go at the end of the service when the sun comes out. See how the sun is coming out already? The rain is going to dissipate. We just thank God. Those of you can give online, you can give online right now and give the five. We just thank the Lord for what God has done for us. And even during this pandemic season, we know that God is still good. If you know he's good, just tap your horn and just say, God is good. He's good. He's bad and good. God has taught us another level of faith. He has taught us how to depend on him. When things look grim, depend on him. Somebody write that down. When things look grim, depend on him. Mother Rousey, I see you. I see you. I see you. God is good, and so even during this time of seemingly storm as we go into the message about the storm that God is bringing us through, we serve the God of the storm who made the storm, who's taking us through the storm, and we will outlive the storm. Tell somebody, we're going to outlive the storm. Oh yeah, we're going to outlive the storm. And so we cannot be dissuaded by what we see, for we walk by faith, not by sight. And we have with us today Minister Curtis Eubanks, who is a psalmist in his own right. He's recording artists. He's recorded with many, many people. He was even on Sunday's Best. I saw him. Didn't make it to the finals, but he's still God's man. Amen. Amen. He's a wonderful psalmist. And he's going to minister the word to us in song. And then you will hear the preach word of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Uh... 
expecting great things from you. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Yeah. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Yeah. I'm expecting great things. Great
and great things. And somebody may ask you, why are you still expecting great things even in the storm? Because Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be right there. Somebody ought to declare that you're, he's here with me right now. He's here with me right now in the storm, in the rain. I got expectation in the storm because Jesus is in the storm. I got expectation in the doctor's office because Jesus is in the doctor's office with me. I got expectation in the financial room because Jesus is in the financial room with me. I got expectation in the mountaintop because Jesus is in the mountaintop with me. I got expectation in the valley low because Jesus is in the valley low with me. Well, I got expectation everywhere I go. How are you always excited? How are you always expecting? Why are you always so positive? Why are you always so, so optimistic? Because I got Jesus everywhere I go. Yeah, oh, eyes haven't seen. Somebody doesn't understand. My neighbor hasn't seen. Your husband may not have seen. Your wife may not have seen. The person in the car next to you may not have seen. But I still choose to believe. I still choose to believe. I still choose to believe. Eyes have, but that's never been done before. Eyes haven't seen. That doesn't even make sense. My sister, that don't make sense. My brother, eyes haven't seen. And I still choose to believe. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard? Your situation is not too hard for God. If you still believe, why don't you honk that horn? Let me hear the believers. Let me hear the believers. Let me hear the believers. Come on, press those horns and shout, to, shout with your voice. Come on. I see you in the Faith. And they, being afraid, wondered 
saying one to another, what manner of man is this? That even he commanded even the winds and water, and they obeyed him. What manner of man is this? That the wind and sea obey him. My subject, just give me about 20 minutes. Something simple, I wanted to come up with something clever and something that will stick, but I just came up with something very simple. Jesus is with us through the storm. Jesus is with us through the storm. Our Father and our God, you have blessed us on this day, for this is your day, this is the Lord's day, and we came to glorify you, we came to magnify you. Even through the droplets of rain, we didn't let that deter us from coming to worship you. We thank you for the faith we have in you. You cause us to come in the fellowship of the saints to lift up holy hands and to praise you that even though we're going through the storm, you came to remind us that you're right there in the midst of the storm with us. And as we deliver your word, oh God, continue to bless us. Oh God, give us a rhema word for each individual car, each individual family member, that you would get the glory out of our lives and to remind us that you are with us through the storm. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen.
awoke him. Imagine being fast asleep and somebody wakes you up because they're freaking out. They don't know what's getting ready to happen and you wake up out of your sleep. And they have the nerve to say, don't you care that we perish? They didn't say anything about him. We live in a very selfless God atmosphere. But we also live in a world that people are very selfish. They have, they're more concerned about how does it affect me? How does it affect my house? How does it affect my marriage? How does it affect my job? They said, Lord, don't you care that we are about to die? Carest thou not, one writer says, carest thou not, Luke and Matthew have a different way of putting it. They said, don't you care that we're about to die? Matthew said, carest thou not that we perish? Yeah. He finally gets up, seemingly unaware of their fright, seemingly unafraid of their distress, seemingly unaware of their struggle. Anybody going through something and you say, God, I don't see you nowhere. I don't feel you anywhere. Do you even care that we're about to perish? Lord, we're in this pandemic. Don't you care about what's going on? He's seemingly aware of their upset. And he says, Lord, 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 carest thou not? In other words, Lord, we're going through this pandemic. We don't know when we're going to come on the other side of through. We don't know when the job rate is going to go down. Lord, don't you care that people are being shot every day? Carest thou not that we perish? Lord, I'm about to lose my job. Don't you care that I'm about to perish? Carest thou not? The world feels that Jesus seemingly is unaware of the pandemic. The world doesn't know, they know, they don't, they don't know, they don't get it, they don't understand. Seemingly, they feel that Jesus is unaware of their struggle. The world feels that Jesus is seemingly uh, unaffected by the unemployment in the land. Come on, somebody. The, the world looks at it and says, seemingly, they're unaware. Jesus, are you aware of the political lies that we hear every day on the TV? Lord, do you care that brutality is in the land? Lord, do you care that people are dying like flies in the street? Lord, do you care that our sons or daughters are pulled over for nothing? Lord, do you care that we've got somebody in the White House, somebody in the Red House, somebody in the Blue House, come on somebody, somebody in the Jail House, that seemingly does not care about our plight. He finally gets up. He does care. Finally, when they go to him, seems like they don't know what's getting ready to happen. When they did all they could do, then they turned to Jesus. They were experienced fishermen and they were used to the boat rocking and reeling. They were used to uh, the boat being out of balance because they were fishermen. They were used to the boat. But when they got to where they couldn't take it anymore, when they got to where they couldn't uh, manage the boat anymore, then they wake up Jesus. Master, Master. Don't you care that we are perishing? Someone might be asking, Lord, how can you see that my son is in jail and you don't seem to be doing anything? Lord, how can you see that people are dying every day and it doesn't seem like he is doing anything? Notice they didn't ask him to stop the storm. They indicted him by asking him, don't you care about us? They never asked him to stop the storm. They said, don't you care about us? Unfortunately, today, sometimes we're human-driven instead of God-driven. Come on, somebody. Instead of going through the storm and asking God, Lord, what do you want me to learn? How can I learn from this? Many are asking God to do things for them instead of, Lord, how can I change the storm? How can I stop the storm? The power that you gave me, you gave me the power of the Holy Ghost. I have the same power to stop the wind. I have the same power to speak to the wind. I have the same power to speak to the atmosphere, just like I did about an hour ago. I said, I know what the prognosticators say. I know what the meteorologists say. If I 
said, but Lord, if you could just hold off the rain until 4 o'clock. Right. Now, that might sound like something selfish. But I said, Lord, we put it off before. Let us have this service, this one last service outside. Look, there's some things in the spirit realm. If you have the right atmosphere around you, if you have the right connection, God said, if you have the right faith in me, you can move the mountain. You can speak to the mountain. You don't have to give, ask God, give me strength to climb. You can move the mountain. You can defeat sickness. You can defeat poverty. You can defeat the adversary. God has given us power to speak to the storm. God has given you power to speak to your storm. Whatever your storm is, if your storm is the pandemic, now we know that God is going to have his way. Ah, but there's some lessons in the storm. It's not just that God allows things to come upon us. He always does it for a reason. God always allows you to go through things for a reason. It's not just because it, it, he's not trying to kill you. He's trying to make you. He's not trying to put you out. He's trying to call you to himself. He's not trying to have things overtake you. He wants to bring you through. Bible says, the Gospel of Mark says that he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Peace, be still. I'm not talking Medea's, peace, be still. I'm talking about the peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm talking about the peace he will give you when you feel like you're going to lose your mind. God can give you peace, not just in the valley. He can give you peace in the storm. Not just peace on the water, but he can give you peace on dry ground. God is able to kind of give you the peace that everybody feels like you should all be pulling your hair out. And you just come and you said, I'm waiting for God to do a miracle. God knows how to give you the peace when your family members say, why don't you just curse God and die, Job? God will give you the kind of peace that when all of us have walked away, you still have the blood of Jesus. God knows how to give you the peace that passes all understanding. The understanding that people have because sometimes people's faith is limited. And so they don't understand how you're smiling when everybody around you is crying. They don't know how you're smiling when everybody around you has walked away. And they say, we don't believe in you anymore. God is able to give you the peace because he's got to take you to the other side of peace. He's got to take you to the other side of the storm. Look, Jesus had been praying and he had been praying for people all day and he was tired. And he knew the destination. That's a good point right there to praise God. David said, he knows the way that I try. He knows my destiny. So even though I'm going through in a rockadon, this is not a rockadon, but a rockadon is a type of storm. Even though I'm going through a type of storm, I must go make it because he's already showed me the victory. I must get ready to happen. Hallelujah. I must get ready to make it through because he's already showed me the new house. I must go make it through because I already saw the new car. I must go make it through because I saw myself in that position. Whatever you put before God, God is able to give you peace in the midst of the storm. So what God has to do is remind you of his promises. God's got to remind you of his will. He's got to remind you of your promises. He said, I have a destiny for you. And you're not going to die in the storm. You're going to thrive in the storm. While other people are shriveling up, you are flourishing. When other people are freaking out, God will use the word in your belly to encourage somebody else to keep going. When other people are losing their minds, God will give
give you the wherewithal. And he'll give you the right scripture. He'll give you the right word. He'll give you the right testimony as Brother Elsie testified. Somebody needs to know that God will get someone out of jail. Somebody needs to know that God will clean up an alcoholic. Somebody needs to know that God will clean up a drug dealer. Somebody needs to know that God can clean up a, a, a prostitute. Somebody needs to know. And when you look at the scriptures, there are all kinds of people in the scriptures to show us, yes, God can clean a prostitute up. Because look at Rahab. Yes, God can clean. He can do things because look at, and that's why you have to know the word of God on the inside to be able to repeat the word. This is how we encourage each other by learning the word and repeating the word of God. When he woke up, he rebuked the wind. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Luke says, where is your faith? So have you no faith? And then where is your faith? The Bible says they were filled with great awe and said to each other, who is this? Or what manner of man, what kind of dude is this? that he can speak to the elements and the elements obey. When you know that he is the creator God, when you create something, you know your creation. Those of you who have children, you know your children. The school can tell them one thing, the school can tell you one thing, but you know your children. Uh huh. God knows us by name because he created us. And God created the elements so he knew exactly who he was talking to. When the Bible says he spoke to the wind and rebuked the water. Come on somebody. God knows his creation. And even during this time, God knows who you are. He came to encourage you by saying, I got this. I got this. Don't you know that even though I'm seemingly, and I have to use the word seemingly, because nothing slips by God. Nothing slips by Jesus. Nothing slips by And so even though he was asleep, he was still aware. That's a good point right there to praise him. Because even in his humanity, he was asleep in his humanity, but his divinity, he knew exactly what was going on. We serve a great God. And though he slumbered and slept as a man in his divinity, God got up and he rebuked the wind. God got up and he told the sea to stop. And he rebuked the sea. And so in his divinity, in his divinity, he was able to make everything all right. Jesus even teaches us that you have to have faith. Even for this 21st century the issues that face us. We have to have uh, faith in God that he can do it. Because without faith, not only is it impossible to please him, but without faith, you can't even encourage other people. You can't encourage other believers. And God has given us, the Bible said, he has given every man a measure of faith. You don't have to have a lot, as the psalm says. Just use what you got. You got to have the faith to know that God can. He may not do it today, but I know he has the ability. He may not do it in my time, but I know he can. He may not do it according to my specifications, but I know he can. He may not do it the way I want him to, but I know he can. We used to sing a song, God can, God can. He can move mountains. Or he can lead us around them. Psalm says, stop the wind from blowing. Stop the thunder from rolling. He can do what no other one can. And this scripture and this passage all also teaches us that even as followers of Jesus, as disciples, we still have problems. Sometimes people look at us and they say, if you're saying, why is that happening to you? If you're a Christian, why is that happening to you? And I tell them, because I am one, and I'm coming out of this situation, that's why. Because I know in whom I have believed. Just because the followers of Jesus and the disciples uh, doesn't mean we don't have storms in our lives. But if you follow Jesus, he'll give you peace in the storm when you realize that you're not by yourself in the storm. 
Jesus is in it with us. You will come out on time. Jesus, as my topic is, is with us through the storm. And many people have a problem asking for help. We think we can do things on our own. The fishermen, uh, they, they did what they could, but then they realized this is a job for Jesus. They realized they have to go to Jesus. The disciples went to Jesus. In the midst of your storm, don't pick up a gun. Go to Jesus. In the midst of your storm, don't pick up a bottle. Go to Jesus. In the midst of your storm, don't go to the arms of another lover. Go to Jesus. He can fix it. Go to Jesus. He can heal you. Go to Jesus. He can deliver you. Go to Jesus. He can console you. Go to Jesus. He can make a way out of nowhere. Go to Jesus. He may not save you from the storm, but he will save you in the storm. He may not take you out. And I know this might not may not be a great revelation for you, but the Lord impressed upon me to preach this today. Because of the storms that we're facing on a daily basis. It used to be every now and then we'd have a storm. But as I was talking to some other leaders and pastors and apostles and all the big wigs and all the potentates, they were saying the hardest thing in the storm to pastor during this pandemic is we have to make quick decisions almost every day. Listen, if you have your mind, you need to praise God for your mind. Many people are losing it. They're losing faith in people and losing faith in God. Talk to pastors all across the country and they're scratching their heads saying, I don't know how we're going to come out of this. I say, we're going to come out alive and well. We have to speak the word. You have to speak what you don't see. You have to hear what you don't hear. You have to acknowledge what you can't see. I may not see the way, but because God hears the way, he's going to make a way. Hallelujah to God. As I said, he may not save you from the storm, but he will save you in the storm. What do you mean? What was the purpose of the storm? Look, we're going through something. Instead of being bad and lashing out, we need to ask God, Lord, what is the purpose for this test? What is the purpose of this tribulation? Lord, instead of, instead of asking God, Lord, why? If you God, why you let people start? Lord, if you God, uh-uh. Say, Lord, because I know you're God. Because I know you can make a way. What is it in this storm that I'm supposed to get? What in this storm am I supposed to absorb? What am I supposed to learn in this storm? Come on, somebody. As you're going through the storm, you learn how to pray. When you're going through the storm, storm you know how to go through. God teaches us how to go through. And then the other point is, God will teach you how to go through what you go through. Do you go through murmuring and complaining? Do you go through doubting God? Or do you say, no, Jehovah, I know you're with me. Jehovah God, I know you're with me. This is the weekend of, of Yom Kippur. This is the weekend. Last weekend, we celebrated Rosh Hashanah. And it talks about uh, Teshua, or, or, which is a type of repentance. And so as the Jews repent, this is the, the weekend, the new year that we have been celebrating all year. No, we're not Jewish. The spiritual side of us acknowledges Yeshua. The spiritual side of us acknowledges Jehovah. And this is the time when we repent and we acknowledge God. Lord, David said, my sins are ever before me. So he said in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart. What does that mean? That means created because I thought I had it, but I lost it. So sometimes God has got to recreate that thirst in us for him. Many of us have our faith have been waned. We we don't love, we don't do the things we used to do. And God has got to allow a storm to happen to make you fly right as a song says, straight up and fly right. God allows things to happen to remind you of not just who you are, but whose you are. Not just who you are, but where you are. God reminds you that I love you with an everlasting love. In Isaiah 43, he said, there's nothing that can overtake you. Though the water come up, they won't overshadow you. Though the waters come up, the waters won't cover you. I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. But what gets us through the storm is knowing that Jesus is in the storm with us. Dr. Scott said, we're in this together. We see hashtags all over the world. You're not alone. You're not 
not alone. We're in this together. But you cannot give in to the thoughts of giving up. You cannot give in to the thoughts of just, I'm just gonna lay down and die. I, I, every COVID patient that I've spoken with who has recovered have all said the same thing. Every COVID patient says, after they come out on the other side, they say that it, it's a spirit. How many know that sickness and disease is a spirit? It tells you to just give up and die. It tells you don't give up. And you've got to tell yourself, get up and walk to the kitchen if nothing else and come and walk back. You've got to tell yourself, like David says, I shall live and not die. Why? I have to declare the works of the Lord. You know you why you can't die in this storm? Because God's going to approve you out of this. God's got a miracle out of this. He's going to approve that there are some people who still believe in my word. There are some people that are still holding up the blessed tame honor. There are some people that still know how to love. There are some people that know how to go through. There are some people that know that God is going to bring us through with a mighty hand. And listen, I'm not just talking about just barely making it through. Honey, some of us are going to pass with flying colors. God has the ability to take you through not just barely. Now, I know the scripture says that the righteous just scarcely making it in. I get it. But while we're on this earth, God is going to bring you through. As the Sunday school lesson was talking about Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to allow you to come through the fire without smelling like smoke. He's going to allow you to come through the wind and the rain without being wet. Come on, somebody. He's going to cause you to not look like what you've been through. He's going to cause you to come out smelling like a rose, even though you've been in the pit, Joseph. God's going to cause you to triumph over the enemy. God's going to cause you to be victorious. I am victorious. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. He's going to cause you to be victorious. In my conclusion, you have to understand that everything God does for you, it's always to be a witness to somebody else. It's not just for you to have a nice car or a nice house. Yeah, we just talk about material things. It's not about that. Yes, we like to look good, drive good, whatever, eat good, whatever. But the bottom line is that somebody will see God in you. When you come out of your storm, what do you look like? When you come out of your storm, are you mad? Are you evil? Are you bitter? Are you upset? Are you mad at the church? Mad at the world? Mad at God? Or is your praise a sweet smelling savor? Is your worship wonderful unto God? Huh? There's some smells that you can smell and you go, oh my God, I have to get far enough away from it. And then there's a sweet smelling savor worship. Right where you are, I want you to lift your hand, just give God the wave offering right in your car. As we go through the storm, and we don't have time to talk about the healings that took place on the other side of Galilee. When you go through your Bible this week, look at that 8th chapter, look at Mark the 5th chapter, and look at Matthew the 8th chapter. What happened on the other side? God, Jesus was able to keep teaching and keep healing. So you must understand, nothing takes him by surprise when you're going through what you're going through. The purpose was to get through the storm, not to linger in the storm. God has taken you through some things, and instead of you getting out real fast, you're lingering, you're lingering. I don't know who this is for, but God told me to tell somebody what you're going through. Now, it wasn't meant for you to be in there for a two weeks, three weeks, a year. Look at the children of Israel. That was an 11-day journey that took them 40 years. You are going through the storm too slowly. You are going through the storm without faith in God to know he can bring you out. Sometimes God takes you through. Uh, if you don't pass the test, guess what? You're going to take the same test again. Same flavor, different brand. It's still chocolate, but it's not hot dots. Making somebody hungry. It might be some generic brand, 
But God said there's a purpose in the storm. But when you realize I'm in the middle with you, it makes all the difference in the world. Child of God, I came to remind you that every time that God pulls us out of a storm, it's to prove his strength. Elder Love read already today that this is a light affliction, but nothing can compare to the glory, huh? The glory that is to be revealed in us. God wants to bring you, and we love to sing the song, There Will Be Glory After This. I love that song. Because if you can remember what happens on the other side of through, you can make it through. If you remember that God's promises are yea and amen, you'll make it to the other side. But it's the enemy's job to distract you and make you look like, oh, it's going to be dark. It's going to rain. It's going to thunder. Oh, we not doing nothing. We're going to stay home. No, no, no. Go out and just try the waters, Peter. Now, in another account, Peter sees what he thought was a ghost. And then it got closer. Peter said, yo, is that who I think it is? He said, Lord, if it's you, what'd he say? Bid me come. Peter got out of the boat as he started walking toward his destiny. Peter realized it was God. When God bids you come, there's some things you can walk on that you normally couldn't walk on. When God tells you to come, there's some things you can do you normally couldn't do. But when God gives you the edict to walk, when God gives you the edict to buy that car, when God gives you the edict to start that business, when God gives you the direction to start that firm, come on somebody. And on that one word, come. He didn't say, hey Peter, Blah, 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 blah. He didn't talk a long time. He just said, come. Some of you are looking for God to give you some great manifestation. Lord, if it's you, I'm going to have 59 fleeces out before you. Lord, if it's you, I need a confirmation of the affirmation of the confirmation. Lord, confirm what you confirm what you confirm. Anybody? I'm not talking about you. Lesson is you. <laughs> On that one word, come. Peter was able to master his faith. Later on, when he realized who Jesus was on the road to Philippi, he said, Peter, who do I, who, 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 who am I? And he went through a series of questions. Finally, he said, you are God's son. You are Jesus, son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But see, he had been watching Peter's temperament. We got some Peters in our congregation. I love them. You got to have some Peters and you got to have some Johns. Sometimes Peter can do the work John can't do. The Lord entrusted Peter to be the chief cornerstone, to be the chief apostle, rather. He trusted Peter. Sword swinging Peter. Cuss out Peter. Peter had a bad reputation for his temper. But God was able to bless his heart, literally. You told myself, oh, bless your heart. Uh -uh. God downloaded to him and gave him the keys to the kingdom because of that one word, come. Brothers and sisters, as we end this service and as we go forth through our individual storms, just remember Isaiah 43 and 2. He says, nothing is going to overtake you. I don't care what you're going through. Some of you have told me you're on furlough and you don't know how you're going to make it. Some of you, you don't know when your job is going to call you back. You don't know if you're going to have a job tomorrow. Let me tell you, that's a storm, but God is with you in the storm. The thing we have to realize is we can't let distractions be louder than his promise. We can't let distractions be louder than the word God has spoken to us. We can't let what we see outweigh what we know. We can't let what we see outweigh God's promises. And the Bible says his promises are yea and amen. That means so be it. So when Jesus comes to see, they are in awe. And he says, I'm taking you somewhere. So if I tell you we're going to go to the other side, we're going to the other side. 
I don't care if I'm asleep. I don't care if you call my name and I don't answer. Just the fact that I'm with you. Sometimes we want God to talk back to us. Sometimes we want Jesus to do something spectacular. Sometimes we want to look, we want to hear the Lord's voice. He said, you may not hear my voice, but if you know I'm with you, that should be good enough. You may not hear a prophetic word over your life, but if you know that I'm with you, that's got to be enough for right now. Listen, brothers and sisters, as we face these dark days coming ahead of us, prognosticators of the weather have said one thing, the scientists have said one thing, our politicians have said another. And that's why our hope has to be in Jesus Christ. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. As you store up your canned goods, as you store up your water, whatever you need to do. And I've been telling people, look, I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not woo-woo scary. But some things are just, you just gotta have common sense. If you see that, I'm not saying hoard it. I'm saying learn how to stock up a little bit every day because you never know when somebody may need your blessing. It's not just for you and your house. Remember, God doesn't bless you just for you. He blesses you so you can get to the other side to help somebody else. He blesses you because your purpose is on the other side of through. Your destiny is on the other side of the storm. Your destiny is on the other side of through. Tell yourself while you're in your car, I'm going to the other side of through. Don't stay in it, go on the other side of three. Why? Because Jesus is with you in the storm. At this time, I'd like for the ministers though to come up. The fact that some of us are going through, don't, don't go by how people look on the outside. How many people we know die all the time and we always say, they didn't look sick. But after a while, you see so many people, something should tell you. It's not how it appears. Looks are deceiving. It's not how it appears. And during this time, you're going to meet the Lord for real, for real, as the young people say. But oftentimes, it's how you go through and what you go through that God will trust you with the victory. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? Grab it, grab it, grab it. It's how you go through the storm that often determines your level of victory. If you need the Lord to do something for your life, like save you, like heal you, come up right now for prayer. Even during this pandemic season, we're baptizing people in Jesus' name. People are still receiving the Holy Ghost as never before. You may not see it, but it's happening. Someone said, well, if the prophets are so, if they're so such a prophet, how come they didn't see it coming? Let me tell you, several people saw something coming, but God did not reveal everything to anybody. I talked to several pastors. They said, we knew something was coming up. We didn't know what it was. The Bible says he's not going to do anything except he revealed it to his prophets. Oftentimes, God will reveal things to you. To yourself and pray. Come on up and receive the Lord. Come up and get prayer. As you're praying in your cars for those who are coming, this is a good day to receive the Holy Ghost. This is a good day to receive the Lord as your Savior. This is a good day to give God the praise for bringing you through the storm. Don't let the enemy tell you you ain't going to make it. He's a liar. Tell the devil, you're a liar. I am going to make it. Why? Because Jesus.